Ahora sí. Suerte.
Hello, and welcome to worship with First Congregational Church of Webster Groves. We are a member church of the United Church of Christ, located on the historic lands of the Osage and Missouri peoples. Today is the first Sunday of Advent, the season in which we prepare for the coming of Christ. And as we often do on the first Sunday of Advent, we're observing Blue Christmas. As we approach the longest night of the year, we think it can be important to acknowledge that the holidays can bring a certain ache as well as joy. And to that end, our friend Martin Mills is going to sing a piece for us right after the scriptures today. To prepare for worship, I invite you to center yourself by taking a deep breath and exhaling. Close your eyes and greet God's spirit here with me and there with you. Let our worship begin.
Good morning. Advent is here. Hooray. Um, as we begin the Advent season, and of course the church tradition of lighting the Advent candles, we also want to celebrate the Christmas traditions in the families in our congregation. So I have with us today John and Val Pacey, and I was wondering if you could tell us two traditions that the Pacey family enjoys during the Christmas season. Hello. Um, one of the things I've always, well, I've done for years now is I would take all the little kids out to lunch to get them out of their mom's hair so they could decorate, wrap gifts, and whatever else they were doing. So to make it easy on me, I would always go to a Chinese buffet and take all the kids and our kids' cousins. And uh, so that was always really fun. And now when the cousins come in town, they're like, Uncle John, when are we going to the Chinese buffet? So I, s I still do that. So I get to hang out with a bunch of, now they're all in their 20s. I get to hang out with a bunch of 20-year-olds, and the moms can still do their thing. So that's one thing I really enjoy. And our uh, second tradition is we've been, our extended family, my siblings, their children, whoever can come, always gathers on Christmas Eve in St. Louis, usually at my mom's house, and we have a just a lovely party, dinner, togetherness, and we've been doing it uh, my whole life, really a long time. <laughs> that's, why, um, that's why you never see us on Christmas Eve. Right. <laughs> um, but the, uh, the start of the festivities is always when Elvis starts singing Blue Christmas. <laughs> Thank you so much. We're going to do a call and response reading now, and then we'll have the Pacey's light the first candle. At last, the end of yet another year is near. In this hemisphere, the days are getting shorter and the nights are growing colder. We are ready to receive the wisdom hidden in the darkest of nights. We are eager to experience the warm embrace of brand new days. We long for the sustaining hope that will usher us into all that lies ahead. We await the arrival of the one who shows us new ways of being, new ways that draw us nearer to God and each other, new ways that illuminate God with us in every circumstance. Good news, great joy, all the people. All right, all together now. We are hope accepting and excited. Thank you.
Can the kids come up here with me, please? We're going to sit over here today by the Jesse tree. Hi. Come here. Come on. Come on. Hi, buddy. Good morning. This is the Jesse tree. Do you guys remember this from last year? Yeah, you do. Isn't it pretty? Oh, you weren't here last year? You know what? I wasn't either. So that makes two of us. It's awfully pretty, though, don't you think? Yeah. yeah. I wasn't here long because we have brothers. Oh, yeah. And so you were probably together, like brothers often are. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't like being alone. You don't like being alone? I don't either. Do you like, what about when it's dark? That's even worse to be alone, right? Yeah. Getting lost in the dark would be really scary. Yeah. yeah. I know. Do you know what this is? What is it? What kind of light? A night light. Does anybody have a night light in their room? I have a night light and I put a night light a sound machine because we make a sound. Oh, it's a night light and a sound machine? That's really good multitasking. That is amazing. Guess what? Guess what? I want to tell you a story about like a really enormous nightlight in the Bible. So all these ornaments on the Jesse tree represent something different from the Bible. And I want to tell you about this one today. You see that? So it can be kind of spooky when we can't see in the dark, right? Um, my kids definitely like having nightlights in their room. Um, and in our Bible story, God created a really special nightlight for people who were scared. And they weren't only sleeping in the dark, but they were wandering through the wilderness for 40 years. It's a really long time. You didn't have a, ba- a nightlight when you were a baby? I know. Oh my goodness! But then later you got stuffies and it was better. That's good. You're not that scared of the dark? I'm glad you're not. It's creepy, isn't it? Yeah. Centipedes, that is. That's super creepy. Okay, you guys. So I know that playing in the woods is fun. Anybody like to play in the woods? Yeah, me too. But if you were out there day and night for 40 years, that would get kind of scary, right? I think so. Um, So these people who had to wander in the wilderness for 40 years, they were called the Israelites. And they had already been through a lot of pain and suffering at this point. So they'd already gone through something really hard. And now they're out in the wilderness, like, forever. So they're really tired and really scared and really mad, probably. Like, what the heck? Um, they had made it out of Egypt. That's the place where they had gone through a lot of pain because the Egyptians were super duper mean to them. And now they were in this dark, scary wilderness. Ah. Have you ever gone through something really hard or really sad and then another really hard or sad thing happened? It's like the worst. But you know what? You know what? One of my very favorite things about our faith is the idea that God is with us. Okay, you can tell me one more thing in just a minute, okay? At the beginning of this really long, hard journey, God um, made like this really big cloud and this really big fire uh, to travel with the Israelites so they would be less scared and they would know they weren't alone and that God was there with them. So during the day, God was in the cloud, and at night, when it was dark, God was in the fire. Now, that's what I call a nightlight. So today is the first Sunday of Advent, which is the month leading up to Christmas, and this is the time that we wait for the birth of baby Jesus. Waiting is really hard. I hate waiting. And I don't like waiting. 
you don't like waiting. I don't know anybody who likes waiting. It's not fun. But you know what? It helps, it helps me to remember that God is with us during hard and scary times. And sometimes God shows up in a fire, and sometimes he shows up or she shows up in a teeny tiny baby. But one way or another, God's light is always with us. Let's pray. Jesus, you are the light of the world. Thank you for being a nightlight to help us feel less scared when the darkness seems to go on forever. Bring comfort to those who are scared or lonely right now. Amen. All right, we're going to go out the doors in the back. Our readings for today are both taken from the Psalms. The first four verses of Psalm 13 call to mind for some people not the words of a military leader, but of a person experiencing depression. Then Psalm 76 addresses God as an almighty presence, defeating the enemies of Yahweh's people. The problem is, there is not a historical reference anywhere in the poem, so it reads as though the psalmist is imagining a dream world in the past tense. The Psalm of David. How long, O Yahweh, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Yahweh, my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death, and my enemy will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. And from Psalm 76, a psalm <laughs> of Asaph. Asaph, I wrote it down and I still got it wrong. ASAP. O oh God, you made yourself known in Judah. Your name is great in Israel. You set up your tent in Salem, and Zion is your home. There you broke the fiery arrows, the shield, the sword, the weapons of war. You are resplendent with light, majestic on the mountains of the lion. Their bravest warriors despoiled, slept in death. Not a single warrior was able to lift a hand. At your blast, O oh God, of our ancestors, both horse and chariots lie still. You and you alone are to be worshiped. Who can stand when your anger is roused? You pronounced your sentence from the heavens. The earth in terror was silent when you arose to execute judgment to save the lowly of the earth. Indeed, they will praise you for the wrath you pour out on others. And those who escape your wrath will gather around you. So make vows to Yahweh, your God, and fulfill them. Let neighboring lands bring their tribute to the one who strikes terror who cut short the breath of their leaders and strikes terror in the rulers of the earth. A couple of years ago, almost by accident, in the midst of a children's time, I had the inspiration to ask for something that I knew would happen and that was to have Martin sing. It was Blue Christmas then, and at least as far as the Paces are concerned, it's almost Christmas now. Oh, have a blue Christmas without you. I'll be so blue just thinking 
about you Decorations are red on a green Christmas tree Won't be the same, dear, if you're not on me And when those blue snowflakes start falling That's when my heart stops bleeding all in you'll be doing all right with your Christmas a while but I'll have a blue blue Christmas if I'll have a blue blue Christmas thank you He has a wider repertory than that, and we look forward to hearing from Martin even more in the new year. Let us pray. The time of the holidays can be challenging, O oh God, because all around us is joy, but somewhere in our hearts we feel sadness for someone we miss or some special thing that we were accustomed to that is no more. Be with us and carry us through our sadness so that those who reap in tears may go forth with shouts of joy. Amen. Um, I, I don't think I realized that I'd coined a phrase when I came up with the title of this message. You know, I thought a song of future past was a thing. It just sounded so right. I, I couldn't, well, I'm convinced that it is a thing, basically is what I'm saying. And uh, maybe I'm not the first person to come up with the phrase, but I can't find it anywhere else. So, uh, I think that a song of future past is indeed a thing. So it's up to me in the few minutes I have this morning to explain what I mean by it, because I live this life same as you, and I know its disappointments and its stresses, its foibles and its conflicts. And furthermore, I know that there are some realities within us and without us which cannot be avoided. All we can do is live through them and do our best to survive and pray that eventually we will thrive. So we have to learn some songs of future past if we don't know them already. So I say that, and now you need a definition. There are things that sound like these songs of future past which I think we must sing. So by way of definition, I'll offer you some examples. When I was a youth, First, a negative example. When I was a youth, there was the Moody Blues album Days of Future Past, P-A-S-S-E-D, which sought to encapsulate the light that is to be found in every single day. It's a song cycle with an orchestral prelude, interludes, and postlude, as well as spoken poetry, blending classical music with rock and roll. Ugh! It's a masterpiece. If you've never listened to the entire album, those of you of a certain age will at least remember the songs Tuesday Afternoon, and Nights in White Satin. Okay, now you know what I'm talking about, but that's not what I'm talking about when I say songs of future past. A few years ago, there was also an X-Men movie, Days of Future Past, in this case, P-A-S-T. I don't know what it's called, I don't know why it's called that, I haven't seen it, but I have little doubt that a devotee will tell me once we're done and then I will see whether the Marvel comics had the same idea in mind as I have here. Until then, I'm going to say that we're probably not quite in the same genre. You see, what I have in mind is this. 
that one way to invoke hope when we are in the midst of despair or anxiety or overmuch stress can be to imagine that the resolution to our problems has already been realized. That we can actually sing our hope as if our goal has already been achieved. I had a counselor who used to ask me, if what you wish were to happen, how would, you, how would that make you feel? And invariably, my response would be, I would feel relieved. There would be other sensations that would accompany that one, but first, always, I imagined I would feel relieved. I, I, <laughs> I feel better just talking about it right now. I've, I can sigh. Because if my hope was realized, then the hard work, the hard emotional work that lay before me would be accomplished. There's still the hard work to do, but this hard work, hard work as we imagine it, would be done. If, as the author of the letter to the Hebrews says, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, then a song of future past is something we sing to ourselves when emotionally or psychologically we've just about had it. You know, when we perceive that we're still in the midst of difficulty and we just wish it was done. Psalm 13 sings, How long, O God, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? Haven't you felt that? Haven't all of us felt that? I mean, this doesn't have to be describing some psychological crisis or physical calamity, even though I think it is. It could be describing something as simple as a heated conversation over a family meal, an unexpected argument at the proverbial water cooler, right? We all know whereof I speak. You don't? You know, you're a white person, and you've just commended a black coworker that they are so articulate. That's the word you used, articulate. And you just happen to be someone she decided to tell how backhanded a compliment that really is. Because you tell an adult that they're articulate, and what you're telling them is that you really didn't expect them to be that way. You know? It's called a microaggression. You tell it to a teenager, good, good for you. Yes, exactly what you needed to do. Or, here's another example, you're a Democrat, and you've just told a loved one about your disdain for people who voted for the 45th President of the United States again. And that loved one turns out to have voted for the 45th President of the United States again. The responses we receive in such instances we certainly deserve because of the level of disrespect we have shown. However unintentional the disrespect may have been, however justified, and the responses indicate the gravity of the work before us towards reconciliation, if nothing else. How hard are you going to have to work to figure out what the apology is? To figure out how to say you're sorry and to mean it. You've got some work to do. 
but there are the same songs that we sing in the midst of heartbreak, in the midst of grief. These are the songs we need in our repertoire when we find ourselves broken in spirit or in mind. We know that the work of approaching wholeness is going to be difficult, and furthermore, that the wholeness we achieve may not be the wholeness we once knew. Understand, we are bound to do the work. It's going to be hard. It already is hard. It's what makes Christmas blue, sometimes. But, the entire point of family, of friendship, the entire point of church, which is beyond family and friendship, is the understanding that we are in this together, that we will bear one another's burdens, and that though we may stumble, we have others to pick us back up and move alongside us. All of us will endeavor together with each of us. The wholeness of the one is the obligation of the many. We will live for a time in the shadow of Psalm 13, or in the shadows, any shadows, I should say, But in our knowledge, in our repertoire, we have Psalm 76 and others. An exaltation of God for accompanying us and destroying every obstacle and hardship. This song will come into our hearts as something along the lines of what the Israelites called a song of Zion, Psalm 76 describes a battlefield in which heaven has defeated an enemy entirely, an earthly enemy. There is no historical referent here. This situation in Psalm 76 never happened. There was no battle Israel or Judah ever fought in which another worldly force brought the opponent to their knees. This is a song like Daniel's vision of the human one in chapter 7 of that prophetic work, envisioning the servant of God coming on a cloud to save God's people, or the dreams of Zephaniah or Malachi. It is revelations, and, and First and Second Thessalonians imagined day of judgment and Christ's second coming. Psalm 76 pictures life after the struggle that is as yet unconcluded, but a struggle which is bringing the individual into a state of newfound wholeness like the psalmist, like the prophets, like Paul and John, we must sing songs of future past, sometimes as a matter of survival, but certainly as a process through the blues of Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's without our loved ones or without familiar settings when all the rest of the world is making as if there are no problems, only love and completeness. As I quoted in my cover article for this month's Covenant News, Bob Marley asked in his song, By the Rivers of Babylon, how can we sing King Alpha's song in a strange land? We do it by singing. By singing despite. By singing of our hope by singing of what we know that God will bring to us by singing songs of future past. Note by note, we sing when we cannot sing phrase by phrase, and we remind one another of the importance of the blues. We remember that others have taught, what others have taught us, that the goal is worth the struggle. For peace is not the absence of conflict, is it? It is the realization of wholeness and ours shall be the victory. That's just how the song goes. The song of future past.
come in. We come to a time of prayer, and most of the prayer this morning is going to be a guided meditation, but before we get to that, I um, wanted to let you know I I do have a couple of messages that I've received of uh, prayer requests. One is from Herb Niemeyer, praying gratitude for adding the shades of blue and gray that surround the light of the new day. Prayers for strength and healing. And from Luke Ferguson, a prayer for his dad, Greg, who was recently diagnosed with prostate cancer. Prayers that he can find the strength through family and friends to stay positive as he prepares to fight this battle and prayers for a quick recovery. What prayers do we bring with us today? Prayers that you're praying. Yes, Carolyn? For Judy Merritt. Uh, Her husband John died. Yeah. Any others? Yes. I uh, just say that my sister and my brother in law are doing quite well. Okay. Which is why the Bethlehem Health Fund. All right. Uh, Martin's sister and brother in law are doing well. So we thank, th- thank you for your prayers. Yes, Diane. In memory of our sister Pat, her death was too noted. Mm. And we have many people who have contributed to the Jesse tree, but the Jesse tree was the inspiration. Um, at, well, Bob McCoy would say it came from Nancy Rudolph, but uh, Bob McCoy and, and Bob Woodsmall built this beautiful structure that we place ornaments on. Nancy? And are, are both, and Bruno has died also? Okay, so for the families of Bruno and also of Anna, both of whom have passed away recently. Is there more? Okay. Um, Blue Christmas is past we have had a ritual in which um, we've anointed worshipers, uh, inviting them forward and placing the sign of the cross in um, chrism on their foreheads and oil, um, scented oil. And um, we're just not quite there yet uh, in the midst of the pandemic. Hopefully in 2022 we will have that. But. In each of these occasions, we've had a guided meditation, and I want to share one with you that um, Hallie and I have been using with the confirmation class. Close your eyes. I invite you to close your eyes. And to clench your hands together into a fist, one inside the other. What is it that you're holding? holding on to? Is there something that's knotting you up inside? Is there something you don't want to let go of? Something you're struggling with? Is there something you don't want anyone to see? Is there something you don't want God to see? Whatever it is, notice that it's there. Notice what it feels like without judgment or blame, simply observing and allowing the knowledge of what you are holding to come to the surface. And if you're not sure what it is, that's fine. 
Simply notice whatever is there. Now, if you wish, open your hands. Maybe that you don't feel ready to do that. That's okay. You can go through this whole meditation with your fists clenched, but know the invitation is there for you to open your hands whenever you're ready. When you've unclenched your fist, notice what that feels like. Does it feel freeing? Does it feel scary? Does it feel like nothing is there now? What's in your hand now? Okay, now take your hands and turn them away from you and push whatever your hand is holding towards God. Whatever was worrying you or scaring you or tying you up in knots, whatever you were carrying with you, whatever you were afraid to let other people see, push it towards God and let God catch it. Let God take whatever it was from you. Let your hands be empty. And now hold your open hand in front of you with the palm facing upwards. Now that your hands are empty, allow God to put a gift into your hands. This may be a gift of encouragement. It may be a challenge or an instruction. It may be, may be a new perspective. It may be a message of love. Maybe you don't know what it is or you're not sure anything is there. That's okay. But whatever it is that God wants to give you, allow God to place it in your hand. What does it feel like? And how does it make you feel? Take a few moments and simply notice whatever is going on for you. Now take that gift that God is giving you into your heart. Place your hands on your heart. See this gift entering into your body, traveling through your bloodstream. What does it feel like? Allow God's gift to spread through you. If you don't feel like you've received a gift or aren't sure if you want to receive the gift, you can keep, keep just being there with your eyes open. Or if you wish, press your open hand to your heart. It may be that you discover something in that movement that you didn't find in your open hand. And now finally, hold out your hands to offer your thanks to God, whether it's for a gift you've received today or for anything else. Use this gesture to offer your thanks to God for whatever you've received. And when you've offered whatever thanks you wish, I invite you to open your eyes and to be here in the midst when i was writing today's service putting it all together and was thinking of this phrase that i've coined the song of future past there is one song that leapt out at me that i wanted you all to hear and maybe even to participate in i personally think it is my friend christopher's finest work but he's here to lead us in a closing song if you look in the bulletin, you'll find the lyrics there, and down at the bottom of those lyrics, there's a place where it indicates the refrain. I'll sing a line, you sing it back so we can get the hang of it. That was the year that it all turned around. Try just that. That was the year that it all turned around. My turn. Even lost as we were, scuffling there on the ground. Try that. Even lost as we were, scuffling there on the ground. My turn. Still a new earth had come. We had somehow been found. 
Try that. Still a new earth had come. We had somehow been found. And that was the year that it all started turning round. Try that. And that was the year that it all started turning round. That was the year that it all turned around. Try that. And that was the year that it all turned around. Even lost as we were, scuffling there on the ground. Even lost as we were, scuffling there on the ground. Still a new earth had come. We had somehow been found. Still a new earth had come, we had somehow been found. And that was the year that it all started turning round. And that was the year that it all started turning round. Wonderful. That'll come by a couple of times. Jump in. Make mistakes boldly right? We'll get the hang of it about the time it's over. Just like life. I wrote this song when our oldest son was two years old. It's called That Was the Year. You were just two years old, so I doubt you'd recall. But your mother and I still remember it all. Started slowly at first. Neighbors gave away cars. Started riding the bus. Playing out in their yards. Then the news from the war started getting bizarre. Personnel on both sides had just decided to farm, beat their guns into plows, turn their tanks to combines. All the generals would say was we just changed our minds. And that was the year that it all turned around, even lost as we were. Scuffling there on the ground Still a new earth had come We had somehow been found And that was the year That it all started turning round We were like ones who dream When we saw on the news all the doors swinging wide at the prisons and zoos they poured into the street then all heaven broke loose they met up at the park convicts and kangaroos so we packed up some food rode our bikes into town and with wardens and walruses gathering round Spread our feast on the grass And you know I'll be damned If there wasn't a gray wolf Lying right there with a lamb And that was the year that it all turned around even lost as we were, scuffling there on the ground. Still a new earth had come, we had somehow been found. And that was the year that it all started turning round. And that was the year that it all turned around. Even lost as we were, scuffling there on the ground. Still a new earth had come, we had somehow been found. And that was the year that it all started turning round. Started turning round. 
started turning round Sing it with me now Started turning round Sing a little louder Started turning round Come on, sing it louder Started turning round The days are surely coming Started turning round The days are surely coming Started turning round. Okay, now you can't say you don't have a song in your repertory that's a song of future past. Would you all please stand with me as, and to receive the benediction? You'll be sitting right back down again, but just stand for a moment if you're, if, if you're able or um, in spirit if you're not. Hear the benediction. We pray continually that God will make you worthy of the call upon you, will fulfill all your desires, all your hopes for goodness, and empower all your works of faith. In this way, the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, will be glorified in you and you in Christ by the grace of our God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Go in peace, go in love, go in power. Amen. Before, before the end, I wanted to thank these uh, I should call them colleagues now. I, I've known them since they were young music students, uh, the members of the Hayapu Quartet. And uh, I just would like to uh, let you know that Patricia, Victor, Paolo, Hector, and Anna um, are so happy to be here. They've been working with the Ariana Quartet and work, honing their chamber music skills. And in typical Paraguayan fashion, they don't want to leave without leaving you a gift. And so um, their gift to you is the next song. And my gift to you is not having to pronounce it, but it's called Your Smile, Nde Bukavu. Please enjoy.
To our guests and visitors today, we're glad you could be with us. If you like, please let us know who you are by filling in a line of the friendship pad. It's usually a black booklet at one end of your pew. I'm told here some of them might be red. You can also let us know you were here by taking advantage of the contact information on the back of your bulletin. We encourage you to stay for coffee fellowship being served in Memorial Hall. If you would like to make a contribution in support of the ministries of our church, please go to our website to make an online donation or for those of you here in the sanctuary with me, there's an offering plate conveniently placed on a table just outside the sanctuary. Thank you for your generosity. And last of all, thanks to you musicians who made this morning so special. Christopher Grundy, Martin Mills, and our friends, whose names I can't pronounce nearly as beautifully as Leon does, but I anglicize them. Patricia, Victor, Paolo, Hector, and Anna who came all the way from Paraguay to play in our midst this morning. Our worship has ended. Let our service begin. <laughs> 